Hi, I'm Emma Stalner Radley, and I am here to do an author reading from my new book, which is out now, Making a Tinderbox, which is a, um, a fantasy romance, historical, I guess you could say, um, set in a world that is a little bit like um, Industrial Revolution Europe, so just before the Victorian period. Right, we're going to start um, on chapter nine which is when our characters have gotten to know each other and decided to embark on an adventure together. Um, I picked this chapter and a little bit later in chapter 11 because they're not too much of a spoiler but you still get a feel for what the book is like. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right. Alison Dream walked along without watching her step. She was too busy wondering how to break the tense mood and the grating silence. It clearly wasn't the time for a long heart-to-heart. -heart. Nessa needed time to digest leaving her family and her home, a much bigger ordeal than it had been for her when she was shipped off to court as a teenager. Then Elise saw the sugar pumpkin in Nessa's hand. How exactly are we going to eat that thing? I do not recall ever having had one. Well, other than as a sauce poured over cakes. Nessa looked back at her and then down at the sugar pumpkin. I have a knife in my pocket. We can cut slices and eat it like that. Um, it's sweet and a little mealy, very filling. Healthy too, at least that's what Leiden tells me. Um, I'd like to, us to eat it soon so I don't have to carry it. We can try it any time you like. I'm quite curious. Um, besides, in all honesty, I did not have that much of my porridge this morning. I'm afraid my spoiled noble breakfasts were a little sweeter and a little less hearty. A slow tug of the corners of Nessa's mouth soon bloomed into that wide smile of hers. Elise was relieved to see it again. All right then, Nessa said. She pulled the knife from her pocket, unfolded it and cut into the fruit. The air filled with a sweet, pleasant scent that Elise instantly recognized. That fruit smells like you. Nessa's cheeks pinked slightly. Ah, you noticed that. Yes, I have a keen sense of smell, and I enjoy analysing scents, Elise admitted. I see. Um, well, my mother makes an oil from the juice of sugar pumpkins and pressed damon nuts. It's good to keep your hands and lips from becoming chapped when you're out in the cold all day. The pleasant smell is a welcome side effect. It is simply marvellous. That smell was all over your bed this morning, and over me. To be honest, I was wondering if you just woke up smelling like that every day. I was envying you something rotten. I'm glad to find that it's something that comes from a bottle, Elisandrine said. Nessa handed her a thin slice of the fruit. Well, a jar, to be exact. I have a glass jar of the oil in my satchel. Careful, I might end up stealing it from you, Elise smirked before bunching up her sliver of sugar pumpkin and popping it into her mouth. The sweet, soft fruit had as nice a taste as it, as it did smell and she moaned appreciatively. Swallowing her own mouthful, Nessa chuckled. You know what? I'm willing to bet you want me to keep the oil so that I continue to smell nice. No one likes a travelling companion who smells like a farm. I'm sure you'll ask me to borrow some when we get to Nightport, though. Correct all counts, Nessa Clay. Nessa grinned and handed her another piece of the fruit, this time a whole wedge. Their fingers brushed, spreading oily, warm sugar pumpkin juice over both their fingertips. At the languid touch, Nessa sucked in a quick breath, swiftly looking down at the ground. Her fingers stayed in place, though, seeming braver than she was. It set off an intense spark of desire in Elise. She is so sweet and innocent under that capable, strong exterior, such a heady and tempting mixture of traits. Elise was just about to brush over Nessa's slightly calloused fingertips again, the skin there always so sensitive that it made any touch intimate. But Nessa smiled shyly and drew her focus back to eating her own wedge of fruit, so Elise decided against the flirtation. Nessa had been through an ordeal when they left her home. Now was not the time to try for some bed play. Elise concentrated on enjoying the walk and the fruit. It was so comfortable being around Nessa, she was torn between wanting to keep this easy friendship 
and finding out if the friendship could grow if an amorous element was added. There was no doubt that Elise was physically attracted to this woman. There were those stunning curves that she stared at last night, and that warm skin with such a healthy glow that she had woken up to this morning. She watched Nessa out of the corner of her eye now, trying to pinpoint what else it was that attracted her. Soft, shiny hair in that braid which frequently allowed a strand or two to escape and caress Nessa's cheeks. She moved slowly but determinedly, an air of strength and calm about her that called to Elise. And that beautiful, broad smile, it did things to Elisandrine that made her feel like a young maiden in the first throes of infatuation. Not that she wasn't young anymore, she was only 23, but she hadn't felt this pull to someone for years. Still, she knew her thoughts turned to the sexual far too easily, and that that had ruined many a friendship. She wanted this one to last. It felt incredibly important somehow. I think we should stop there. So that was our characters, um, Lady Ellison Dream Falk, <laughs> uh, a noble woman, and um, a farmer's daughter, Nessa Clay. Uh, we're going to find them again in chapter 11, I think, when they've just arrived at the city they were heading towards, um, the fictional city of Nightport. And we're going to see what they make of it. As she looked around, Elise's heart skipped a beat. A new city spread out in front of her. She wondered if her father had seen this architecture in his lifetime. If he had, it must have been many years ago and this place must have looked quite different. There was no real design style to speak of, other than a sense of a sudden urgent need for housing and buildings for commerce and industry. She saw what appeared to be a forest of chimneys, all puffing out large plumes of near black smoke. Most of the buildings were stone, many with towers. Others were tall due to floor after floor having been stacked on top of each other, with little regard for safety or aesthetics. Occasionally there were some smaller, unassuming wooden buildings squeezed in between them. Elise shifted from foot to foot, trying to get comfortable enough on her painful feet to take in the sights. The sunlight stood a strange contrast to the grey, dark city. It seemed like a place made for the night. Adding to that sense was the vast amount of wrought iron streetlights lining the crowded cobbled streets. All gaslight, no candles like Elise had noticed Ground Hollow still had. The air smelled heavily of smoke, horses, and under it all, something very sweet. Perhaps it came from the food wafting out of bakeries and various shops, or the flowers that dirty children were selling on street corners. Highmere had its own scents, but they weren't as overpowering as the ones were here. Elise found herself walking closer to Nessa, partly for safety in the bustling crowd, and partly because of the more pleasant smell of sugar pumpkins wafting off both their skins. A four-horse carriage drove past them. It was black with elegant golden symbols. People hurried along in its wake, shouting to each other in what sounded like playful tones. A man sat outside a barber shop near them and played something cheerful on a raggedy violin. She heard Nessa suck in a breath. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, I know it's not traditionally beautiful, like a pretty castle or a sunset, but it's so... Alive? Elise filled in. Exactly. Nessa's eyes were bright. Everything and everyone moves with purpose and speed, like cogs in a machine. But it feels like they enjoy it, like it drives them to achieve more. There's so much energy and colour. You get the feeling that anything can happen here. And it probably does, on a daily, or perhaps nightly, basis, Elise agreed. Nessa stood with her mouth slightly open, taking it all in. Her whole body looked like it was ready to spring into action. Elise took Nessa's hand. Just so we do not lose each other in the crowd. Let us keep moving. And that's probably where we should leave them. Um, so if you would like to buy this book and give it a try, as I say, it's called Making a Tinderbox. It is uh, a standalone book, but it will be part of a series uh, following these characters in this universe. Uh, the series will be called The Tinderbox Tales. So yes, Making a Tinderbox by Emma Sterner-Radley. Thank you for watching.